The next presentation is from Christy Morrissey from the Department of Biology and School of Environment and Sustainability at the University of Saskatchewan. Christy is a recognized international leader in the fields of avian and aquatic exotoxicology. Her innovative integrated approaches have revealed new insights into the root causes of migratory bird and insect declines from agricultural pesticides and other environmental threats. She is dedicated to engaging and communicating her discoveries with the public and is leading transformative efforts to conserve and restore biodiversity through policy-relevant science. Hello, I want to talk about this agriculture environment paradox. I want to know how modern agriculture can sustain a world population of 9 billion people using the techniques that we are today that are ultimately damaging the environment and the land that we live on. Conventional modern agriculture is really focused on simplified single purpose landscapes where mechanization and technology has been the primary focus, but also using a lot of um, inputs like chemical fertilizers and pesticides to maintain um, production yields. And pesticide use in particular has been increasing in Canada over the last few decades. You can see here for herbicides that it has increased um, since the 1980s. And in the prairie region alone, we've seen a 58% increase. In fungicides, we see the same pattern, but it's a 412% increase in the prairie region. And for insecticides, same thing. In the prairie region, we see about a 50% increase in insecticide use. Now the focus has been on the selected problem chemicals, and maybe we could just get rid of those. In fact, the, the, this focus has really been on chemicals like glyphosate or Roundup as we commonly know it or some of the chemicals, uh, insecticides, like the neonicotinoids shown here. Four out of the five top uh, insecticides used in the Canadian prairies are neonicotinoids or their systemic replacements. My research on the neonicotinoids in the prairies is uh, diverse. We've been studying this area because it makes up the majority of Canada's farmland, 82%. And not surprising, the prairies then use 80% of Canada's pesticides. And we've estimated that over 215,000 kilograms of neonicotinoids are used annually in the prairies. There's repeated and chronic water contamination of uh, particularly wetlands. And we know that wetlands are at an increasing risk across the region for pesticide contamination not just from neonicotinoids, but also from replacement chemicals that now we found are actually even, some of them are even more toxic than the um, compounds they were meant to replace. Now the neonicotinoid insecticides are applied as foliar sprays and seed treatments, like these blue canola seeds you see here are actually a seed treatment. And we know from our research that they're contaminating water, they're, they're contaminating insects, and the insectivorous birds are exposed to these, as well as seed-eating birds, shown here on the right. Let me briefly touch on these seed-eating granivorous species that are consuming these seeds um, on migration when they stop over in agricultural landscapes. In fact, short and longer-term consequences have been documented from uh, consuming these, uh, these seeds. And our research is showing that um, birds like this white-crowned sparrow when we orally expose them to the imidacloprid neonicotinoid, that they reduce their food consumption, they rapidly lose um, fat and body mass, and this um, lowers their probability of departure from a stopover site and increases the uh, migration delays. In fact, birds that were exposed to the chemical stayed on average three and a half days longer than controls. So why is all this happening? Why are we seeing is such an increase in these damaging pesticides being used in agriculture? Well, it really has to do with the fact that environmental health has frequently been traded off for increasing food security or food production in the form of yields, as well as for the economics of the situation where um, there's a perceived need to trade off the environment in order to uh, make more profits. So how do we reverse this problem? 
Well, it comes down to this uh, very old uh, um, idea or theory of the diversity stability hypothesis. As you increase diversity, you also increase ecosystem function. And Leopold, Elton, and Odom, and others, famous ecologists, knew this since at least the 1950s, that this relationship is important for stabilizing these systems, adding resilience, and essentially much of the function can be predicted by adding this diversity. So the solution is to create a new framing that focuses on the win-wins, where we add um, biodiversity and to the systems, minimizing those trade-offs and increasing the ecological intensification, production, profitability, and biodiversity. Now, ecological intensification practices can be very diverse and they can help lower chemical reliance while still increasing yields. There are many different practices that are being tested by um, agricultural scientists and farmers alike, like cover crops, intercrops, and even integrating livestock into these systems. And in my own lab, we've been testing the impacts of perennial diversity, adding this in strategic locations, working with producers to co-design where to place these next to wetlands or in saline or marginal areas. And we know that protecting wetlands, for example, is an easy, low-hanging fruit. If you protect them, you actually see they can support avian biodiversity. Um, birds that were tagged with these little GPS trackers actually were foraging more commonly around wetlands, even in intensive crop fields, and increasingly so as they moved away from their nest box, suggesting how important these features so my conclusion is that we need to not only focus on the problem of pesticides and, and their damaging effects, but also study these integrated systems level solutions so that we can reduce chemical use, um, but also integrate practices that are going to be beneficial to the agricultural system as a whole. This creates multiple win-wins that not only benefit biodiversity, but also can enrich the soils, produce more food, and produce more ecosystem services that are overall going to enhance the resilience and sustainability of the system. Thanks for listening.